Hello guys, welcome to Express Tutorial for Beginners. In this lesson, we are going to learn how you can structure your Express um, JS application. Now, um, remember that Express is unopinionated. One of the consequences of that is that there is no fixed rule on how you can on how you can structure your project. That's one of the consequences. So different developers different teams they structure their project the way it suits you know, their needs but what i'm trying to do here is to suggest at least to beginners who might not really know the different parts of the express application what they do and how you can organize them in a you know more logical or easier to work way so that's the goal of this lesson um to get started, what I will do is to create a simple express project. So I'll head over to the terminal. You can just navigate anywhere in the in your computer and create a folder. Let me create from the terminal. Let's call this express structure. Then I'll cd into express structure. That is the folder name and with npm in it, npm in it dash y, this will create uh, a package.json with some default options, right? These options. Let me go ahead and open this in VS Code. Okay, so this is the folder open and this is the package.json file. The next thing I want to do is to, to install express. So you run the command npm install express dash dash save. I think that's the only thing we need for this. Or let's just add node mon so we can easily restart the server so node mon will be a dev dependencies npm install dash d capital d for dev dependency so we say node mon all right we have express and node mon installed let me go back to to the project folder so we have node mon and we have express right the first thing we are going to do is to create our express server so the way i want to do this is that i will start with having things mixed up maybe having different things in the same files then gradually separate them into the respect their respective uh, directories you know folders and all that so for that what i will do is to let me create a file called server.js and inside here what i will do is to require express that's to bring in express let me increase this a little bit so i'm going to bring in express const express to be equal to require express and the next thing is port that is the port our server we listen to something like local uh, 3000 5000 so we can visit localhost 5000 for example to see our app running so i'll say port should be process.env.port of 5000 this is a very common thing that you see in express applications where we say if in the node environment there is a port variable there use it otherwise use this one of course it's going to use uh, localhost 5000 port 5000 so 
then the next thing is the app const app is equal to express so we have our express app here and down here we can see app dot listing not length come on app dot listing port you can add a callback let's just say console dot log listening on port on port the port which is going to be 5000 i will save that now we have our express server listening here what we are going to do next is to head over to package.json and add a script for starting our server so let's call that start i'm removing the test there because you are not writing um, automated test so start will be node mon server dot js node mon will help to restart the server when we have changes um, in our code and our server file start of file is located in server.js right that is the command over here let me go ahead and start that server I'll open another tab here. I'll say npm start. So we have the console output listening on port 5000. It means that if I head over to localhost 5000, of course, I'm not going to get anything because we have not defined any route, right? That's why it says cannot get slash. So let's go ahead and define a route to do that i can come up here and say app dot get let's say the home page which is slash what do we want to do request response net we don't really need next i can say raise dot json here to return a json successful can return anything it doesn't matter um data one two three so our node mom will restart the server because of the changes that has happened now if i refresh the page i will get that response for that route of course a typical application we have multiple routes let's keep it simple what we are going to do is just have like three routes here okay um, let's say a to do application a to do application we are going to have a route for for create to do let's say to do so that will be a post request to to do's endpoint then we have request response um, here we can do something like uh, save to database just assuming and we return a response let me just copy this successful through um, data I will send whatever that was sent in as the request payload so request dot body then I will do similar thing for to get the to do's that's the list of to do's let me just say that data is json is array of to do's you know it doesn't really matter one um text is learn node not js okay i have syntax error here okay so this is the end point to get to do so you begin to notice a pattern that our application this server.js file is getting so cluttered with i mean let's imagine we have hundreds of endpoints we can't have everything in the same file right 
meanwhile let's just test one of those endpoints we can easily test that is to get to those we get this response according to the definition here to get all to do's so at this point we begin to think how do we structure our code so it is easier to maintain easier to manage so that things are in their right place um, the first thing we can do is let's have routes folder so that our routes can go inside that folder okay so what we can do here is to create a file called routes.js let me copy one of these over i'll copy the get to do's actually let me copy the create to do get to do's I'll paste it here and save but a typical application can have different um, different features different entities for example there will be user there will be product there will be order there will be settings there will be different modules different functionalities in a, diff in a typical application and we can have all those routes inside one routes file so this is not going to help us as our code base grows bigger what we can do is to group things further down let me have a folder called to do so everything about our to do api can go into that folder all right so i'm going to drag this move it into to do right I can even rename it to to do's. It's a matter of preference. Instead of just calling this route, we can also call it to do routes. So, what that means is, for example, if we have users, um, we can have users folder and inside user folder, we can have the user route and other codes, other files related to users. Remember, this is just one of the different ways you can structure your express application but we are not done yet we are not there yet <laughs> um to make this thing work we need to use router from express so const express is equal to require express and then we say const router to be express dot router so we are not importing app here we are not using app instead we say router dot post router dot get and finally we export the router oh module dot export we export the router okay how do we make use of this we head over to server.js I can actually delete this guy we don't really need it we come over here we we say we can just import let's say to do route to be require we go into to do's we get to do routes then you can come here and say app dot use the path is to do's and then the routes so take note this is app.use not app.get or any other thing it is app.use it means whenever we hit the to do's endpoint call the routes in this file right you can see here that we already have this prefix to do's it means that inside this file we shouldn't have the to do's again let me show you what that looks like so if i hit to do's nothing i will go one more step to do's then we get something that's because we have the to do's here we also have it over here what we can do is come over here and remove to do's because that prefix um in the path is already 
defined here so if I go over here this will not be defined now I will remove one of the to do's and we get the response back now our routes they are in this separate file okay that is to do routes that is one step in the structure now another thing is that a typical application we have more logic can just maybe return this most likely there could be a query to database not from here of course uh, maybe a service a service class service method or function whatever a service function that might even call another function a repository interface whatever it is but usually they are more logic than just a comment in a typical application it means that this can get quite long so many things happening here so the next step of our refactoring is to make use of controllers instead of writing the logic in this route uh, mapping so to speak what we are going to do is to have a controller that we handle that for us following our grouping pattern what i can do is to add a file here called to do controller.js so inside the to do controller let me just cut this i will come back to this file in a moment and come over here and paste actually let me not do it in a confusing way i will bring over express into this controller that's the first thing and then i will uh, have a function what do i call this create to do that will be an arrow function that takes request response and now i can just come over here and copy what i have inside here cut paste so this is basically doing the same thing that the callback function we had here was doing it therefore means that we can remove whatever that is here and replace it with that function from to do's controller okay let's export it first module does export is equal to create to do so we come over here and pass create to do make sure to import that as the callback function as the route handler okay of course we do similar thing for get to do's so we can say get to do's this is a function we are going to create in a moment um come over here and have another function const get to do's to be equal to that and we add it to the export get to do's so if i come over here make sure to import get to do's now our route file is cleaner easier to read and understand what is going on before i go further we would have noticed a naming convention i'm using for files this is just out of preference um, you might have seen many tutorials or other code bases that use camera case so something like to do controller you know whatever you prefer is totally fine but for some reason i prefer to use um, this hyphen to separate words so this is our our controller and like i said all the logic maybe to talk to database or stuff doesn't usually go into controller so we can separate things for that maybe to do service service dot js here you can have some business logic etc etc and you know that separation of code based functionality in terms of functionality can continue as it makes sense but let's not keep going deeper and deeper and deeper okay so um what next we have our to-do routes here 
let's just be sure that everything still works as expected if i refresh the page everything is still working fine so this is a basic structure um, that i think makes sense instead of having things uh, having like the route doing um, things that controller would have done of course it works but it is more difficult to manage now one more thing i want to do is to um, to separate the app from the server so what that will look like is let me add another file called app.js so the server we take we take care of things like uh, connecting to server connecting to database and other server whatever connection thing right typically we can have it like that then over here in app.js what i want to do is to require express const express equals to require express and then we say const actually let me copy what i have over here and paste so i'll copy from here to there come over here and paste it what we want to do is at the end to export app come on i keep trying to type here six module the export to be app all right over here in server.js we can remove everything from this point to that point and we can say that app is equal to require app everything should still work the same so here we can do stuff like uh, let's say connect to some database like mongo mongodb database uh, mongo client sort of dot connect and we have our callback function and inside here we can start you know those kind of things can now happen in the server.js file distinct from our app js so things like uh, automated testing and stuff can be easier to to do now um okay let's see what else we can do here let's check our server that not that come on let's check our server to see that everything still works yeah everything still oh come on something is broken there what did i miss to do okay it is not to do slash to do so it is one to do's everything is still fine then okay let's take this a little more further one more step typically when you have incoming the incoming request you know user supplied data you want to validate the user input right so one thing we can do is try to write that validation here let's say for create to do we are expecting the request to come in with title and not title sorry just text nothing more that is the text represents the to do so we can try to do something like if not request dot body dot text maybe through through an exception error text is required so this is us handling validation inside the controller function it will work of course but we can also separate the validation logic you know, that validation layer from the controller right so for that i can even add a folder here let's call it uh, validators i don't know you can call it anything and what i will do is copy this and of course remove this guy from here so instead of having to do the validation over here we can have the validation 
separately. So let's call it create to do. Let me add validator so you can easily tell what it is doing. Validator.js. Here I will just paste what I copied from create to do. Let's call it create to do validator. All right. I will remove this response stuff. We are not saving anything to database. So text is required for our to do. If we don't get any text, we can throw an error or return response. Anyone we prefer. So that means we can do something like res.send, res.json. Um, what is going on? Res.json. Just a moment. Continue. Successful. We say false. You can return whatever data you want to return. So um, error to be as a text. Text is required. Save that. So if there is no body, no text in the request body. Otherwise, we have to do something here we bring in the third parameter which is the next function so we can call next to pass to the next middleware okay let's just return here since we're not throwing the exception so this we handle the validator how do we use it of course this is just a middleware almost everything in express is middleware all we have to do is come over to the route not in a controller you notice that here we are making use of the create to do we have to call that middleware before the function to create to do so that this runs before this this way this the validation will happen here before uh, we get to the controller so that the controller will just do the job of you know what it's supposed to do instead of worrying about data validation also it will make it easier for us to you know look at the controller and understand what it is doing so it's not cluttered with different um, functionalities all right how do we test our validator so for that let me just head over to postman um i will quickly make a request to that endpoint localhost 5000 it's going to be a post request and the endpoint is to do's what is the request body let me remove these things i have here i will send nothing for now and see what happens nothing happened let me find out what the problem is. The server crashed. So, okay, it's saying that something does not exist. Let me go back to the code and see. Create to do. We did not export this guy. Export. Come on. I keep saying export. What do you do? Export. Actually, we can have multiple. No. This is doing only one thing so we are exporting only one thing here create to do validator all right let's see our server still did not start let's go to the route make sure we import this create to do validator make sure to import that save again now our server is back up so i'll go ahead and send the request again we are getting some errors. Come on, what is going on? Cannot read properties. Text of undefined. Why? Made a request here. And request the body. So it seems our problem is not coming from this file. Let's go to app.js. What we need to do here is to tell Express to handle the JSON 
request the JSON payload. We are trying to send a JSON payload. The way we can do that is to say app.use express dot json save that let's check our server our server is still running and send the request one more time so why is it successful that's weird it seems our validation is not working let's see why go to to do route and this is to create and if not it's supposed to be not not if come on how many bug do i already have in this simple code so it's supposed to be if not supplied that is if the text is not supplied we should return an error so send again we get that validation error message that says hey text is required and of course at this time the request did not proceed to to the controller so this is how we can handle the validation in a separate middleware in a separate file okay now we have a basic structure there are still more stuff you can add here uh, let's see if we can add one more thing so guys please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so thank you and um, another thing is that sometimes you can have shared codes shared functionality right so maybe there's a kind of logger or some configuration or something that is shared across board across different modules different um, functionalities what we can do is to create a folder let's call it common so whatever that is common here can go into this file let's say for example um, i don't know string utils or js this is just some random example uh, so here we can have a function called stream a function that trims string whatever this is just an example so here we have what um, the different modules have in common what they can use maybe to do's can use it um, users can use it another module can use it and oftentimes we also have config config here we can have things that has to do with configuration like configuring the the logger or uh, even some database stuff can also go inside config okay and one more thing of course typically we have dot env this is always usually at the root the root um, folder here you can add some add uh, some app configuration like debug enable debug to be true i didn't spell that right it doesn't matter um, database credentials and all those stuff can come inside here right so you can go on and on but the idea is to have a structure of code base that is easier to work with easier to maintain and you know that is it all right guys so this will bring us to the end of the lesson i hope you enjoyed it until next time happy coding